Hello creatives, we are having another big snowstorm. It is, um, I think it's March 23rd and it's pretty dark in the studio so I've moved my lights around. Um, you can probably hear Don, he's plowing outside. I don't know if I can show you without making you dizzy but it's piling up and it's supposed to snow all day so I decided I'm going to work on my big table today and I don't work on this that much when I'm filming because um, the camera situation is a pain. I haven't used this setup in a long time because it's a pain <laughs> so hopefully I can get some halfway decent camera angles so I'm really just feeling like doing some spontaneous creativity. Um, unfortunately, sometimes setting up filming equipment, getting your camera and your mics and lights and everything uh, right can kill your spontaneous feeling, you know, your, your desire to just be spontaneous. But I really would like to film it, so I'm gonna give it a go and see how it comes out because I think it could be really inspiring. Um, so I'm going to throw my camera up in the stand. I'm going to show you some of the paintings I've been doing over the last, I, I would say month. I think it's about a month that I've done these. And then um, I'm just going to divide up a piece of paper with some tape, I think, and smack some watercolor around, just slap some watercolor around. And maybe some Neo or um, Derwent ink tens, maybe some Neo color too. I don't know very spontaneous so we'll see what happens i hope it comes out inspiring so this was um i think yeah this was just a i mean super super loose landscape but so much fun to do i ended up putting some salt on there um you know so the things that have really been inspiring me lately are still lifes really loose landscapes um just super wonky still lifes yeah, loving that, loving getting really loose with it. I'm loving it. I'm really loving this work. So the wonkier, the better, really. I just, my tastes have changed so much that I'm finding tight work or really realistic work painfully boring for me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it at all, but I just feel like I want to um, just get at, I want to abstract what I'm seeing, but still keep an element of having it be recognizable. You know, like these bouquets are one of my favorite things that I did, these vases. I want you to I want to use the minimum amount of information that I can use and I'm not good at it. I'm really, it's a real deep dive for me. I keep swinging back to, to tighter paintings like this. Now some people would call this loose, but in comparison to what I'm trying to do, this is a little tight. Um, and then I'll, I'll have an element that'll get loose. It's just a real back and forth swing, and it's been an incredibly fun adventure for me. Um, like this one really tightened up in some parts, looser in some parts. You know, this one I ended up going around it with a colored pencil, but still desiring to do more abstract. This was, um, oh, I forget what the artist's name is. Shirley Tre Trevina, maybe? Um, I'll try to remember to put it on the ski. It might be Shirley Trevino or something, but I'll try to, that was inspired by her. Loved that. Loved how the vase is barely there. Um, super wonky. Did in my art nest one night. This was last night that I did in my art nest. Just, uh, my dry gouache palette, just making marks. Now, Somebody who has inspired this kind of work right here is Sonia Britton, and I hope I pronounced her last name right. Um, but she's inspiring me to, to go back, more back towards my abstract. If you've been watching me for a few years, you'll know my early, well, my earliest videos, I was still a fiber artist. I was doing paintings on silk. But after that, I came on and I started doing 
um, abstract, large abstract paintings and some demos. I wasn't posting as frequently then. And then I kind of moved away from abstract as just like a release, just as a way to warm up in your studio or to sit in your art nest and do at night. Really enjoyed doing these last night. Uh, what else have I got? Let's see. This one I love. Super loose, some scratched in marks, um, you know, barely distinguishable shapes. I did this out in the front yard. Actually, I filmed this. I don't remember if I filmed it for Patreon or YouTube, but I did film that. And then a tighter. Then I swung back to a tighter landscape. There's nothing wrong with either of these. I'm just desiring to get looser. And you know, I uh, sometimes I do desire to do a tighter painting and that's fine, but um, this one I did a demo on YouTube for, and this was fun. I did this with ink tents. This is all done with ink tents. So that was really fun getting loose that way. Um, these I just recently did and um, just super loose daffodils. Every year I, I make an effort to paint daffodils and dandelions loosely and with varying success. I really like these. I really feel like you can tell what they are as daffodils, but they're super loose. Um, same with these. I think this, these are some of my most successful loose daffodil paintings. I have some beautiful, very tight daffodil paintings. I'm just not interested in that right now. Very loose landscape. Uh, I think I did this in my art nest one night. Two more really loose landscapes, super loose, funky colors. Um, yeah, it could go even looser, you know? This too, just loose, loose landscapes. Again, I, my goal would be to get even looser. This was a plein air painting that I did. Uh, this was a David Hockney. So those, and then this painting is inspired by Jeanette Phillips. I took a, a, a workshop with her. I mean, it's just an online thing. It's a little odd. It's where she published some of her, she closed her Patreon and she published some of her Patreon demos. Um, so it's a little disjointed and she shuts the volume off on some of them, which made me sad, but I'm really inspired by her work. And she all, she's the one that turned me on to the, the Shirley Trevina, our Trevino artist. Um, she does crazy loose uh, florals. Jeanette does. I mean, some of them are so loose that it actually is maybe swinging a little too far for what my head is re ready for at this point, but she's really got me turned on to do some loose stuff. So I've been trying to loosen up with my still life paintings. Um, I, I feel like these apples were successful. I love the shadows. Um, I kind of like this half of the painting. This half of the painting I started to tighten up especially with the fish in the platter. I just started to tighten up on that and lose interest in it. Um, and then they, these were intuitive paintings. That was an intuitive painting. Oh, I have to remember to go back to that palette cleanup painting. But here, this is another example of a loose landscape, super loose, could be even looser. Here's a loose one, really loose. But anyways, you get the idea. Loose still life, mixed media, mixed media. I just, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to find my way with where I want to be on that pendulum. Like how far into abstraction do I want to go? Um, can I go and still have it feel right to me? Cause that's what matters. It doesn't really matter who likes it on Instagram, which I know that that head thing does get hard. It really does get hard, but um, yeah. I, they do tend to like my tighter work better. So moving into this area is always a little groundless for me. But so I have this, I have this set of Karataki. Now this is what was inspired by Sonia, a couple of things. She inspired me to get these back out. I keep trying to make friends with these. And then when I apply them thickly, they get shiny and I don't like that. And I kind of give up on them. I know tons of people love these, absolutely love these. So don't yell at me. Um, <laughs> if you hear me say I'm not crazy about them, uh, I just have to find the right way to use them. 
And on this paper, this is the Arteza that Sonia told me about, the Arteza Premium, it says Premium Sketchbook, 100 pages, 118 pounds. Anyways, I think they call it drawing paper, dry media. It says dry media, but it does take wet media. I put tons and tons of water on this. So it does take wet media uh, just fine at, in my experience, but it's, it's pretty heavy paper. But so I flooded this with water while I was working on it. I wanted to try to get some hard lined blooms, but I also wanted to maintain some really soft areas. I'm not familiar with painting in watercolor this way, so it has been a super, super fun way of experimenting. So um, I'm grateful to Sonia for introducing me to this sketchbook, very inexpensive. They go on sale, and when they're on sale on Amazon, they're very inexpensive. And for her inspiring me to get these back out and give them a go, because I'm really happy with how this came out. And on this really absorbent paper, it didn't, it didn't get shiny, only in a couple of areas where I laid it on really super thick. So today what I'm thinking of doing is spraying these down and um, maybe taping this off. Uh, hmm. I don't know, I gotta think about it. If I'm gonna tape it off, maybe just taping it off into quarters. I don't know, I gotta think about that a little bit. And then just doing, exploring with some color mixes. So um, putting a little bit of color in each square, different color combinations, and then possibly going back in afterwards and doing some drawing or mark making on top of them. I don't know where this is gonna go, but it's a play day, so we'll see what happens. Since I'm not that familiar with these colors, and you can't always tell with some of the darker colors what's in here, I'm gonna keep my swatching sheet nearby. This was the swatching sheet that came with the Kiritake, and these watercolors did not work well. They came out so blotchy on this swatching sheet. So someday I need to redo this, swatch these out on better paper, but for now, that's what I have. I have a little palette here to, in case I decide to mix puddles of paint, which I'm sure I will. Um, I've ripped up some paper towels, so I have them at the ready, and I have some uh, cling wrap. I have different scraper tools, sponges, um, different things that I can make marks with or scrape with. Although in this small, oh, I forgot I had that in there. That's a Daniel Smith um, watercolor stick. I might use that. I could use some wax resist. We have options. So, so, so many options. I'm gonna wet these sponges down because they work better when they're a little damp. I think maybe I'll keep one or two scratchy. Oh well, yeah, I have this too. Keep a couple of scratchy items out. Um, maybe this one too. Wet these down, keep this handy, and keep this out for now. These work better if you dip them in water first. They they can be fussy, I don't know. I've had mixed, mixed luck with these. This one's dirty. So that's there, cleaned off. And, um, Put this aside, may not even use any of that stuff. And then I have a huge variety of brushes. I have some of my Chinese silk painting brushes that I used to do my silk paintings with. I have tons and tons of these because when I was doing silk paintings and silk scarves, I used to use a different brush for each color family to save time. I actually forgot about this brush. This is kind of a cool little brush. And then I have these big, brushes, these big wash brushes. I'm thinking of trying to use some of my really big um, wash brushes that I have that are that hold a ton of water and paint and are very hard to control. So that might be something I play with. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I went downstairs to grab some lunch and take some meds and I ended up not feeling well. So I had to kick back for a while, but I'm back up here and I'm going to try to just put down a few marks on each section. I'm gonna grab a really big brush because that's one of the hardest things for me is to um, not overdo. 
So I'm really just going to be exploring color combinations in this one. Um, so I want to look at my color chart here and see what I might want to put together. And I'm thinking, I guess I have this upside down. Um, I'm thinking maybe the indigo, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I may just grab for this first one, some indigo. Now the question is, do I want to let that dry before I put in another one? I think the next one I'm going to try is going to be maybe Payne's Gray. And maybe I'll just sort of make marks with my brush and see what that does. Oh, maybe these would be like, have stems. That's my other hard thing too, is staying, um, oh, let's see, let's try a different color combination, is staying abstract and not, let's try something I wouldn't normally use, this pink. And just, uh, make some marks here. This, I don't think this, um, what is this called? Washi tape is going to keep the watercolor from flowing under it. It's quite old and it's so damp here today that it feels like it might flow under it. Now I'll take this, um, purple they call this. Looks more like a magenta to me. And maybe just plop some in into that. see what happens with that. Let's see if I take a light blue like this, maybe this really light blue here. Hope you can see my palette. Yes, you can. And kind of make shapes around that. Whoops. And let them flow into each other. Ooh, I like what's happening there. I have this zoomed out because I want you to be able to see my palette, but I guess I could zoom it in a little more. Okay, let's just see if this makes any marks in this yet or if it's too wet. It actually does. It does make some marks. Interesting. Okay. Now, while this one is still wet, I wonder if I plopped some purple in there. These are technical terms, plopping. It would actually be interesting to do this this way and then to do... Um, do it with a, a brand like Daniel Smith with the granulation and, you know, really a, a brand that flows really well. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Oh, I'm thinking, where's my sheet? I'm thinking maybe with this color combination, the way it's coming out, actually maybe with this one too. What are my greens? I could try this really bluey green which I think, let's see, it's the second one in here. Mm, not too crazy about that. So maybe I won't put too much in. Mm, maybe it's not too bad. Do I want to, I want to be sure I leave my whites. That's another thing I can tend to do is is wipe out my whites and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I have good whites in there. 
and I was thinking some green in that one. And I'm trying to pick colors that I don't normally use. Maybe I'll try some of this rose beige somewhere, like a background color. Ooh, and the way it's flowing into there is kind of cool. Ooh, okay, <laughs> that's fun. Okay, liking that a lot. Wow, okay. I could just take some water and push it into here for some blooms if it's not completely dry. See what happens with that, get some blooms going in that area. I'm gonna pop a little bit of a darker purple into here. See what happens with that. That milky peach is mixing in with that, which is interesting how that will come out. Okay, oh, this one, I didn't get back to this one. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with this lime green. Kind of like a shocking green against this dark blue. And what I may do is, ooh, I'm wondering if I should put just like a touch of that in here somewhere, just a couple of different areas. Pops of color. Okay, let's see, where was that indigo? One, two, three, four, this was the indigo. I'm gonna push that across there. and let it kind of flow into. Wow. Wow, that's fun. What would happen if I took, let me take some of the paper towel and see if I just try to soak some of this up. I do have that sponge too. Okay, that's interesting. If I really wanted that to stay, I might want to hit it with a, a dryer to prevent anything from flowing back into it, but I'm gonna let it go and see, see what it does on its own. Ooh, I do like that though. Cool, okay. So I'm pretty happy with these three so far. Okay, guys, so if I had done all six of these in real time, this video would have been like an hour and a half long. So what I did was I condensed the video. I edited it down on the next three and sped it up. If you want to see me do the fully narrated version of these next three um, paintings like I did on the first one, I go over what colors I'm using you know, what tools I'm using to scrape in and all of my thought process, that will be over on my Patreon, hopefully on Monday. I just need to get that bit edited, but uh, yeah, the full demo for the second three paintings. I'll actually put the full demo for all three paintings up on, I mean, excuse me, all six paintings up on my Patreon so that it's there for future people to watch them all together. But like I said, for this, in this video, time-wise, it only made sense to speed up and edit down the next three. But it still gives you enough, after seeing my thought process in the first three, I think there's still enough information here um, that you can kind of follow along and see what my thought process was. This was so much fun, and I hope that you guys will give it a try. So I am going to just play some music for the rest of this demo, and then I will check back in with you at the end of the video. Don't answer the phone, spending the days on my own, then repeat this for weeks to come. I don't care what I miss. 
I'm gonna pull the tape off of this. Let's peel. There's... Nothing says I couldn't stick it in one of my other sketchbooks that I'm using. Okay. There they are. And I actually did not measure the tape or try to put the tape on evenly. I just went for it. So there is the top row. I don't know how far, how close I can get without it getting blurry. And there is the bottom row. And I mean, you could take them further even. You know, you could do drawings on top of them or whatever, but I'm pretty happy with them the way they are. I'm, I'm actually gonna, I actually think I'm gonna cut them out of here. I'm gonna be making some changes so that I have more time to paint. Um, I wanna do more demos for my patrons and yeah, right now I have too many irons in the fire. So I'm gonna be letting some things go so that I can do more of this kind of really interesting, um, explorative work on my Patreon because that is the feedback that I've been getting is that people want more of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Play around with the materials that you already have in your studio and I will see you in the next video. Take care guys, bye-bye.